I hear a lot of questions from beginners about smooth chord transitions. Um, it's, it's something that every beginner struggles with. How to get from one chord to the next. And now I want to talk a little bit about economy of movement um, and efficient movement from one chord to the next. There's a lot of chords, very common chords and very common changes that you'll make that have similar finger combinations or or one note in common and this makes it easier to make that transition now let's look at a G chord you know you might start by going well I put my little finger here my next finger here and my next one here and there's a G and now I want to change to a C well let's see that goes one finger here and one finger here and one finger here and if you're doing that you're wasting time and you're never going to get a smooth transition from one chord to the next. Look at the, look at the similarities between a G and a C chord. These two fingers right here are exactly in the same relationship on a C. They're just one string apart. So don't think about starting from scratch every time you finger a new chord. You're just going to move these two fingers over. And when you're playing a G, this finger right here is just kind of hovering over your second string anyway. You just drop it and move these two over and you've got a C. It's that easy. Now this is true of other chords. Oh and, and by the way the the other chord that's closely associated with the G and C is a D or a D seventh. Now the D seventh change is really easy from a C because you're gonna leave this finger exactly where it is and pivot on it and just rock over and lay the other two fingers down. So you go. Now um, you can look at E to A. There's another one here. Here's your basic E chord. Now I finger my A's where, with my fingers all scrunched up with one two, three, like this. It's because my fingers are fat and I can't fit them all together in a straight line. If you do it like that, look at, look at what happens to this finger when you make that change from E to A. You just slide it up and drop the other two fingers in place. So this finger stays as a reference point when you're making that change. You're not having to lift your fingers and start fresh to find an A chord. You're just... rocking that finger back and forth. And from a D, to change to a D from that A, this finger here stays right where it is and the other two just find their place. So you rock on this finger. It's just a, it's a pivot point. Now, this holds true of bar chords too. Um, let's let's go up and, and bar a G chord. Um, you may not understand yet why this is a G, and this is a G, but if you have an E here, this becomes an F, F sharp, G. Now the same is true of a C chord. You can play a C chord like this. So look at this change from G to C. This finger here, my ring finger, is just going to rock over. It isn't even lifting. It's sitting on the fifth string here and as I rock it over, the tip of it just lifts rolls off of the fifth string and is no longer touching it. And now I'm covering the fourth, third, and second strings. So you just lift these two string, these two fingers and lay this one over. The bar finger doesn't even move. And it becomes a very fluid change. Again, it's all about conservation of your movement. Um, e to B7th. 
here's a pivot. Your other fingers move, but this one here just stays right where it is and just rocks over a little bit. You'll find these all over the place, so whenever you're making a chord change, try to look for similarities, common fingerings, and ways to get there from here. Don't think in your mind, oh, one chord, uh, now the next chord. It's think transitions. Practice this and it'll improve your speed greatly.